But your current skills will not be enough to defeat the minions of Ares. I offer you the power to freeze your enemies where they stand. You must earn such a gift. Medusa, the queen of the Gorgons, bring me her head, Kratos, and I will give you the ability to wield its power. Welcome back to more Let's Play God of War 2. This is part 2 of our Bog of the Forgotten two-part special. Last time, we have acquired the Golden Fleece from the annoying Mole Cerberus mini-boss, but come on, with how much health it has, it's basically a boss. And now we have the Golden Fleece. The Golden Fleece is our parry mechanic! At last! Six episodes in, finally! We have the parry, and the parry in this game is super great. Not only is it good for blocking projectiles, you can go ahead and disrupt and turn the tables on Gorgon on, on Gorgon stair attacks. I didn't do a great job for, for the first one, but basically, if a Gorgon stares at you and you block, and you do a, a, a parry block um, just as it's staring at you, then you can do a quick QTE, press one button, and you can freeze everything in the general vicinity around Kratos. Very useful. Uh, there's going to be plenty of encounters where that trick is going to be the only trick available to us to actually um, to actually win the fight. Gorgons are very are very Gorgons especially are very quick to break out of being um, of being turned to stone. They are the quickest enemies to potentially break out of turning into stone in the game. But if you're quick enough, then, you know, you can go ahead and, uh, if you're quick enough, you can go ahead and, uh, and, and, and shatter them, even, even though they are very quick to, to break out of stone. Killing the, uh, the guy in the, at the end of the last episode stopped the, uh, the conveyor belt wheel from spinning, allowing us to destroy it. It also stopped the, the other wheel at the, uh, at the entrance, which let us get another, another Gorgon's eye. And now that we have the ability to deflect Gorgon stairs, we can go ahead and enter the, temp the proper temple of Euralee uh, once we make our way back to that. But before that, I did mention in the previous video that there are some super secret ultra bonus chests that are hidden in the Ruins of the Forgotten that basically require someone to backtrack across the entire Ruins of the Forgotten to get them. Basically, after you get the, um, the Golden Fleece from from the uh, from the mole Cerberus and Jason's corpse, then you can backtrack across the entire ruins of the Forgotten to to the one and only other area in 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 this part of the game that includes um, Gorgon Stairs, which was that conveyor belt with with stairs and all the enemies that that came upon us. Uh, we have to backtrack all the way there, which is kind of annoying because there's no fast way to get there. We we literally do have to go through the entire area again. Thankfully, not as many enemies this time. It's going to be a couple of encounters, but nowhere near as many as uh, as our first time through in the previous episode. But we have to go through all of it again. We have to kill anything that gets in our way. And we have to realize that even though we never opened that green orb chest that was right there, it opened by itself anyway. That's kind of weird. It's one of the only times God of War 2 does that because that green orb chest that we just passed was not opened. We didn't open it, and it remained unopened, and yet the other one, for some reason, rose was opened for, for, you know, whatever reason. That's a weird thing. It's only with that one chest from what I noticed, and, uh, yeah. So, here we go. Fast, fast, fast. Making our way through all the ruins of the Forgotten again. We want to get to that conveyor belt on the other side of this wall. We're almost there. And here we go. We're finally here. Nice. So deal with the enemies and then go ahead and use your Golden Fleece to do what you've been doing with the Gorgons um, since since you've gotten the Fleece. And go ahead and just uh, parry back these these stairs to destroy the, the walls that, um, that are connected to them. Specifically the walls on the left. The walls on the right don't break, but the walls on the left do. And for breaking those three walls, you get three item chests. If, one Gorgon's Eye, one Phoenix Feather, and another Urn. Uh, I believe this is our second Urn. We haven't gotten an Urn 
of power in a WoW, but just as a reminder, they are things for bonus play, aka New Game Plus mode. Um, yeah, there's there's no other way to to explain that. They're just they're just um, special bonus things that you can that you can have for, for for New Game Plus mode. You have to find them. The first one was back in Rhodes Palace, way back in the first episode, and the second one is here. You have to backtrack across the entire ruins of the Forgotten after getting the Golden Fleece in order to actually get. Um, the second urn of power. As a reminder, there are six, but you can only get four in the main story. And that is our second of four. We've also gotten our 18th and final Gorgon's Eye, so we have the max amount of health that we could possibly have uh, for now. Similar to God of War 1, there is a final secret health upgrade that is tied to something that is not Gorgon's Eyes. And we will get to that uh, much later because that doesn't come into play until much later and unlike in god of war one where we were able to um get our our bonus health upgrade and our bonus magic upgrade at the same time we won't be able to do that in god of war 2 those upgrades come at uh, at different points of the game for now though a blast from the past you remember these guys from god of war one these are the armored soldiers that we encountered i believe in athens back in god of war one part of Ares's undead army uh, not the Pandora's Temple variants, these are the Athens variants. Uh, they're a little bit stronger than the than the Athens var than the variants from 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 Athens and God of War One, but you deal with them in exactly the same way. They have exactly the same attacks and the strategy to deal with them. Unlike with the uh, God of War II enemies, where launching them up into the air is not really super recommended, these g enemies, these blasts from the past of God of War I, operate exactly as they did in God of War I, therefore the best strategy to deal with them remains to launch them up in the sky and mash circle to do, a, to do big damage to them until they're ready for, for QTE kills. And there you go. A nice blast from the past from God of War I. Those enemies are going to come up... Uh, quite a bit before before we reach the end of the game, but um, it's nice to to mix in the uh, the old with the new, as, as it were. We're about to hear some uh, some dialogue now, so I'm going to shut up and let that dialogue play. Kratos, yes, I am aware of the misery you have brought. Cool. So that is going to be our boss for this area. Some might classify her as a mini boss. I classify her also as a boss because in Titan mode, everything is just so damn, so damn, so so uh, ding dang powerful as it were, so damn powerful, whatever. This encounter, we have more God of War One soldiers, and we are going to have new variants of Minotaur to deal with. I think it already spawned in, but I'm not super sure because I can't actually. Yeah, there it is. That is the Hades Minotaur. That is a new variant of Minotaur introduced in God of War Two. It looks radically different from the ones that you would see in uh, in God of War One or the ones that we saw earlier in God of War Two, which were just, um, you know copy paste drag from from god of war one these are the new god of war two variants of minotaurs and they are kind of annoying yeah they're kind of annoying they're very powerful of course um most of their attacks are blockable but one of them is not there is this uh, this special slam that that they do that causes a shock wave that is very annoying and is unblockable. Everything else they do is blockable. They have weird timings for, for their attacks, and they have a decent amount of health, so overall I would consider them a pretty healthy threat compared to compared to most other enemies, but you know. Thankfully most of the things that they do are blockable, so it's not the worst thing. They're they are one of the first enemies to introduce post getting uh post getting the parry ability, and well it shows because they are a step up from, from what we've been facing so far. That attack right there that, that it did, that is the unblockable attack that you cannot uh, deal with and you just have to get away from. Yeah. Now, thankfully, I'm taking advantage of the fact that, uh, similar to God of War Ascension, similar to most other God of War games, if you... Oh, God, that attack does so much. It's very annoying to deal with. If you... Um, Pushing, if you if you get an enemy to be off camera, then they will stop trying to attack you and aggro you. 
Uh, so it's a good idea to... It's a pretty good idea to, um... Get an enemy off camera to kind of cancel whatever whatever weird attack they're doing that you can't really anticipate or or see properly. So if you can get them off camera, then they will stop trying to uh, to mess with you for for a few precious seconds, letting you letting you uh, rest up and, and and cool off, as it were. You'll never reach the sisters, Ghost of Sparta. It is my fate. All right, thanks, guy, for believing in me. I guess whatever. We have this little segment because that guy didn't really slow us down at all. It's just gonna take a few seconds longer than than, a normal, than it would have normally. You can use the uh, the the uh, fly bombs here to uh, blast blast a hole in the wall that uh, that we blasted a hole in, and that is another item chest for us. So, you know. Thanks, guy. You really didn't slow us down at all, and all all you did is just give us an opportunity to get our our next magic upgrade. Only one more magic upgrade to go before we are at the max amount of Phoenix feathers. But uh, yeah, thanks, guy. That was a weird little little aside. I guess it's just showing off that, like Pandora's Temple in God of War One, there's a lot of people here aside from Kratos that want the same thing that Kratos does. Um, this game, I think, does it better because there are, there are actual cutscenes and interactions and boss fights with people that are looking for the same thing that Kratos is looking for. Whereas in God of War 1, it was just um, a bunch of nameless soldiers in the background that occasionally popped up that showed that uh, Kratos was not, was not the only one taking the challenge of trying to find Pandora's box. And there were a lot of people that were trying to do that, but this game, I think, does that a little bit better. These um, these soldier enemies with the uh, with the scythes and the swords, uh, they're back. They're also from God of War One, and they operate exactly the same as they did in God of War One. When it's just one by itself, go ahead and just launch it into the sky, press circle, and just keep doing that until it's ready to uh, until it's ready for for QTE for QTE stuff. It operates exactly as it did in God of War One. I don't think it does even that much damage compared to other enemies. So uh, you know. Not a big deal compared to compared to other threats, as it were. We have ourselves a save point here. Now I'm about to die again. I'm also about to um, not be able to hear some dialogue that um, that the boss of this area wants to wants to try to um, share with me because the um, the sound editing here is a little bit off, and it's a little bit difficult to actually make out what. Um, what Uraeli, spoiler alert, is uh, saying to me here. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you because thankfully there's a quote um, online that I can just read. So Uraeli is basically saying, ruthlessly cutting down my line, the Gorgons, your hands wear their blood. Praise to the sisters, for on this day, Kratos, you will meet your end. I technically did. I, those buzz saw, that buzz saw got me good. I do find it interesting that a lot that a, that uh, some of the enemies here, like um, like the Barbarian King and Ureli, are being sent by the Sisters to slow Kratos down, as opposed to being fellow searchers of the Sisters of Fate, like Kratos. It's very very interesting, I think, that little uh, difference about how some people are are here to to look for the Fates, some he people are here working for the Fates. It's interesting the the, the kind of people that uh, that you come across. In your adventures here, and it adds some uh, some spice, some variety, as it were. This little section is not difficult. Just pull the lever, lift up the wall. You have you have time. Don't worry. If if you if you run, you you have enough time to to deal with that. There is no worries. Stepping into the obvious boss fight arena, let's go to the obvious trap and begin the obvious trap boss fight. Hooray! All right, compared to the Mole Cerberus, Uraeli is simpler. Compared to the Mole Cerberus, a lot of things are, are, are simpler. Uh, Uraeli is powerful, but she telegraphs her attacks pretty well. Um, just getting out of the way, I did die one time. Uh, just didn't do a good job, but overall, I wouldn't classify the boss fight as being, uh, as being difficult, as being overly difficult. Uh, Uraeli has a few attacks. She's going to try to do her stare at you. 
but you have plenty of opportunity to do a simple mash circle QTE. Uh, every time she swipes her tail at you, you can block that, but if she tries to swipe her tail um, in a upwards arc, then you cannot block that and you will have to roll out of the way. So she does the stair, the stair is easy to deal with, just uh, mash circle. It doesn't actually freeze her, just to, just to be clear. Uh, horizontal swipes can be blocked. I'm trying to parry them to be cool, but I can't mess it up. But horizontal swipes can be blocked. Uh, the vertical swipes have to be uh, dodge rolled out of the way because you cannot uh, you cannot uh, block the the vertical swipes of Euralee's tail. And that's it. Phase one is very very uh, simple and straightforward. There's not there's not much to it. You can block or parry horizontal swipes of the tail. The stairs don't uh, don't do. The stairs are very easy to deal with, and the vertical swipes are the only thing you have to deal with. Phase two is when she's going to start relying on these uh, columns, and she's going to uh, do a couple of things when she's out. She's on columns. She's either going to do a stair on the on the entire uh, ground of the of the boss fight arena, or she's just going to swipe her tail at you, or she's going to do that um, that ground slam attack that she just did. She's not going to spend much of much of any time away from from the pillar at all. So you're going to have opportunities to attack her after she swipes her tail, after she does her uh, ground slam attack, after she does a stare, you basically have an opportunity to attack her at, at every point. It's, it's a very, very simple, straightforward encounter. There's not much to phase two of the fight. Um, even if you mess up the, the Gorgon stare, she gives you plenty of time to break out of being um, turned to stone so that you won't have to worry about her following up with an attack and instantly uh, shattering Kratos. Phase two has uh, two segments to it. The first, the, the two segments are dictated by the destruction of the pillars. So once we destroy one of the pillars, we move on to the second half of phase two of the battle. Second half of phase two of the battle is exactly the same as uh, the first half of phase uh, of phase two. She has the exact same attacks. She doesn't add anything new. This is just, you know, continuing on from from what we were doing for for the uh, for the first half of uh, of phase two here. She's not going to wander off to to the other part of to the other part of the arena she was at for phase one. She's not going to throw in the attacks she was doing for phase one of the arena. Uh, phase two, both halves, is exactly the same. She's just going to rely on the pillars. She's going to do her some stairs. She's going to swipe her the tail sometimes. She's going to do a ground slam attack, and eventually she's going to get weak enough for you to do a simple QTE to knock her down and push us into phase three of the battle. Phase three of the battle is exactly the same as phase one, except she has new uh, slam attacks that are more desperate and powerful and are difficult to dodge. I, I actually don't think you can block the, the those attacks. So for phase three of the battle, I always recommend just uh, get into Rage of, the Titan mode, Rage of the Titans mode and end the phase as quickly as possible. You really does way too much damage. She's way too fast. Some of those attacks are unblockable that she throws in there. Uh, just don't deal with the Aurelia in phase three. Just use Rage of the Titans and just end it as quickly as possible once you're pushed into phase three of the fight. Once you beat Aurelia, you get the head of Aurelia magic. Unlike the head of Medusa magic from God of War 1, I'm going to be using the head of Aurelia a lot more because there's a lot more encounters in God of War 2 that I think Eureli is super useful for. We also get to move forward with um, our, our our next uh, our next upgrade. You may recall in part one of um, of this two part Bunga the Forgotten special that we had gotten to level three of Blades of Athena, and then I decided that I was going to stop upgrading that for a while. It's because the next thing you want to upgrade and focus on upgrading is the head of Eureli. Head of Eureli is super useful for quite a few encounters from this point onward in uh, God of War 2 Titan mode, so you want to make sure that immediately upon getting the head of your Rayleigh, ideally you should already have over 5,000 red orbs so you can power it up to level 2 and get the Gorgon, the the, the instant uh, Gorgon freezing magic with uh, with, L, with uh, L1 triangle. Uh, hopefully you have it because um, it's going to be very, very useful that you that you have that magic from, from here on out and that you focus on in on um, leveling up the, the Gorgon Stair for level three as soon as possible. So you can have the ultimate version of the um, of the Stair Magic for later encounters in, in God of War 2. Now that we've beaten Euralee though, it's time to officially leave the Bog of the Forgotten. We have dealt with uh, some consequences of our past. We've dealt with Ulrich, we have dealt with Euralee. Now it's time to leave once again. 
Now it's time to leave and get back to exactly where we were last time uh, before Ulrich sidetracked us. When we get out of here, we're going to be right back in Destiny's Atrium where, where we exited, where we, where we were at uh, before. But before all that, we have to uh, actually solve the puzzle of this room. Very straightforward. We're just lifting up a bunch of rings. The twist is going to come with the final ring that we need to lift up. Um, because that particular ring is going to be timed. And since it is timed, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to uh, do all the untimed parts of this puzzle first in order to have enough time to actually, you know, get through get through get through this area once once we're able to once once we're actually able to uh once we're able to, to actually start uh once the path for for the exit opens up there we go see i can do words i can do words eventually so the way this area works we got a bunch of gates we have a bunch of rings we lift up the rings obviously we're going to be using the uh, Amulet of the Fates to slow down time to get past some very, very um, strict door puzzles here. Adjusting the volume on my microphone a little bit because there is more landscaping happening outside, if you can believe it. This is literally the next morning, and I swear to you, every single morning is like this. There is always some landscaping project that's happening that makes a lot of noise and really cuts into potential potential recordings as a result i am not a big fan of it at all but again as i said for yesterday's session that is just the nature of the beast unfortunately now i do want to mention this is the next day i've i've cut up uh, god of war 2 into three recording sessions uh, the first session was episodes 1 through 4, the second session is going to be episodes 5 through 8, and my final session will be episodes 9 through 12, as well as the extras video. So that's nice, nice and uh, straightforward. I like it when I have an, an almost even amount of, episode, of episodes, because it just means that uh, my days are, that the recording sessions are pretty easy to, to work around and to schedule. Got some swimming here, but not really much comes from it. Again, I'm breaking pots just to show that there are red orbs in them, but in Titan mode, those red orbs are worth so little that they are divided by two and basically worth nothing in, in Titan mode. So that's a shame. And as I mentioned before, that makes God of War 2 uh, one of the only games, that and Ascension, where I'm not going to be able to upgrade everything before we get to, to, the, uh, to the credits unfortunately. Uh, thankfully, God of War 2, as we'll discuss in the extras video, saves your progress on um, on what you've been upgrading, so that so that once you start Challenge of the Titans or or other extras, you will be able to pick up right where you left off in terms of, uh, of upgrading of upgrading your things. And, you know, we'll talk more about that as that becomes relevant to the extras video. Uh, for now, however, we're almost done with this uh, ring puzzle. Now, we're going to go ahead and activate the uh, the last few mechanisms that are necessary to uh, to open the way for us. I actually forgot to lift one of the rings, which is going to be kind of funny in a little bit when I uh, try to do this puzzle and uh, am not able to, to get through in time because I literally forgot to raise one of the rings. And it's not going to be this one that's going to be timed and connected to the Amulet of the Fates. It's going to be it was one of the other ones that I forgot to raise, but we'll we'll get to that in a bit. Because first we have a fight. Uh, thankfully, this fight is connected to a fate statue, so we can basically just slow down time and make this one of the easiest encounters in the game. Because at this point, we should have Blades of Athena level three, and at Blades of Athena level three, similar to Ghost of Sparta, we get the triple triangle combo. Uh, it's not as fast as it was in God of War Ghost of Sparta, but triple triangle combo is still very powerful. And in situations like this, where you are able to slow down time to your advantage, uh, you will have plenty of time to do triple triangle combos and kill enemies with uh, with absolutely little to no risk to you, which is nice. Here I'm being careful because those two, because those um, sword and fireball enemies that we encountered in uh, part one of this uh, Bog of the Forgotten special, um, if you kill them not through not through QTEs, then they will pr then they then there is a chance that they will um, only lose the lower half of their body and they'll start crawling towards you, uh, you know, Last of Us style. 
And if they do that and they get close enough, then they will explode. And if they explode near you, then they will still do damage. So you have to be careful of that as well. We're also introduced to some uh, Berserker enemies here. These are bigger versions of enemies that we've been seeing so far. They're very easy to deal with. Um, doesn't take too long to break their shields. And once you've broken their shields, it just takes a little bit more damage after that in order to in order to uh, get them down to a QTE kill range. And with the added advantage of the Amulet of the Fates, we don't even need to... Uh, we don't, we, we don't even need to worry about uh, taking damage because everything just slows down for us, which is very, very nice and very, very advantageous. All right. With everything dead, we can now complete the puzzle. Well, we can almost complete the puzzle. As I mentioned before, I had messed up the... Uh, I had messed up on and forgot to lift one of the rings. So we're actually going to be in a situation where one of those rings is not going to be lifted and I won't actually be able to... Uh, to swing my way across this 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 uh, this whole area, so that's that's going to be kind of a shame. But it is what it is. So here we go. I'm going to try the first time, but then I'm going to realize that there isn't anything here to swing from. Oh no! So I go ahead and I just uh, lift that up. It actually took me a couple of tries before I realized what why I wasn't able to get it. So <laughs> that's why there is a little cut there because it actually took a little bit longer than I, than I would like to admit before I realized what the actual issue was with uh, with solving this puzzle. Thankfully, doing ev doing everything beforehand allows me to very quickly just uh, get back to here, raise the ring, slow down time so the ring doesn't immediately start going down, and be able to swing my way across in relative safety and with plenty of time to spare. And there we go. There's the third ring. That's the timed ring. Once you're past that, you're all set and you're all home free. Unless you forgot to raise any rings like I did. And for our troubles, we can start working on our last set of Phoenix Feathers. Again, uh, 18 Phoenix Feathers, 18 Gorgon's Eyes. There are, There is an extra health upgrade and, and, an, and an extra magic upgrade similar to God of War 1. Uh, unlike God of War 1, they are not unlocked at the same time. In a special location, they are hidden throughout your adventure, and we will not be getting to those until much, much later on. Moving away from the big ring room, we now have our next trap, our penultimate trap, I believe. The penultimate trap of this area and the penultimate trap of this video. It is this little elevator section which, with a bunch of hounds. This is a very easy trap to deal with. Just grab the hounds, kick the hounds, not much to it. The twist is going to come in the fact that the gate is locked and that there is seemingly no way to unlock it. So what do we do? Kratos is not going to have that. The gate is going to very, very slowly unlock, but that's not quick enough for us. So we need to buy ourselves more time. When the, when the elevator gets up high enough, just a mash circle. You will be able to push it down just a little bit. Two more dogs, always just two more dogs, will spawn and uh, and drop down to join in on the fun. Kill them really quick because they can attack you while you're doing this um, mashing circle thing. And if they attack you during that, then you will not be able to push the elevator down and you will get crushed and you will die and you will have to start over. So make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, thankfully, you don't have to wait for the door to open all the way after doing just... Uh, just, just after lowering the, the elevator just a few times, the the door will be will be uh, open enough. The gate will be open enough that you can just um, you can just jump through, and you don't have to worry about it opening all the way. It automatically closed, so the dogs can't chase you. You can stick around if you want to see if you want to hear the dogs die, but they're you know if you if you've already killed enough dogs at that point, then they're not going to uh, give you any red orbs. So there's really no point in uh, in sticking around. Immediately after dealing with the hounds, you have more harpies. Oh, boy, our favorite enemy type in the game. More harpies. Actually, this is about to get super annoying. The harpies are a harbinger for what is coming next. You may have noticed in the background there that um, we have another rock minotaur mini boss fight. Unlike the first one, which was time consuming and kind of annoying, but you know, a very easy affair. The second rock minotaur mini boss fight is the most difficult and annoying of the three in Titan mode, and that is going to come from the twist 
that this that the, this upcoming mini boss is has a gimmick or a feature, if you will, of spawning unlimited harpies to annoy Kratos and peck him to death. And well, you'll see, it's not pretty. It is a very, very annoying encounter. But uh, here we go, second rock minotaur, hooray! The Rock Minotaur itself does exactly the same things it did in Phase 1. It has one brand new attack where if you're far where if you're far away from it, it's going to need that. It's going to pick up uh, rocks and just uh, and toss them at you. The rocks are unblockable. But never mind that, because most of my deaths come from harpies or from weird hitboxes, as you saw from that one zoom in. Uh God, this boss fight is this mini boss fight but technically should be a boss fight with how, annoying it, with how annoying it is, is the worst of the three Rock Minotaur mini-boss encounters. There are a total of three. This is the second one. Holy mother of Jebezus, is this encounter just awful. I hate, 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 hate this mini-boss. It is the worst. You can parry the, the rock throw, but you can't block it, so... Uh, either dodge roll, or if you're confident enough, then you can go ahead and uh, and do a parry block, and do and, and do and do a parry. Uh, you can't even do do the thing of where of leaving one harpy alive because there's always got there's always got to be at least two uh, in the arena at any given time. So if you kill one, eventually another one is going is going to spawn in. If you kill both, then you know two more will spawn in. It, it's 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 really annoying. There's an unlimited amount of harpies. The rock minotaur doesn't help matters at all being so big and intimidating and annoying it is a terrible mini boss encounter that i died at six times so i can attest that i don't like this fight in titan mode it is it it it, it is the worst encounter in the game i think there are boss fights that are easier than this this is just practically unfair in 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 some ways so i would recommend the strategy being similar to what you to what you did the first time you don't want to waste all your magic but you know be prepared to 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 use uh, you know some magic to uh to speed things up a little bit don't use the uh the gorgon the gorgon magic cuz the rock minotaur is already stone and the aiming is a little bit whacked in this fight, so Kratos is usually going to be just aiming for the Rock Minotaur and not the Harpies, so you can't even use the the Gorgon the Gorgon magic to like quickly get rid of the Harpies to, to get them out of the way for, for a few extra seconds and giving you more time to deal with the Rock Minotaur on its own. You're not really going to have that opportunity. Um, this is a terrible, terrible, terrible mini-boss encounter. I don't like it at all. It is just overwhelming in the worst possible ways. And a test of luck more than a test of anything else. But thankfully with a combination of magic, combination of Rage of the Titans, combination of luck, we have gotten the Rock Minotaur down to QTE kill range and can finish this terrible mini boss encounter. There's only one more of these and the last one that we're going to be fighting is nowhere near as bad as this one. Thankfully, because the other one doesn't have harpies, and harpies remain one of the most annoying enemies in God of War 1 and God of War 2. Hooray, but more so in God of War 2. Regardless, though, we are done. That is the last major encounter of this video. Uh, whew. Our big detour is, is, is all said and done at last. There's, there's, uh, there's no more for us to, to worry about or, or deal with for, for a little bit now. The last thing that uh, we can optionally take on, we don't have to take these guys on, but we can take on these uh, skeletons for some extra, some extra red orbs if you want. But you don't have to. If you, you if you want if you want to just uh, run up the stairs and end this part of the game, especially after how annoying the Rock Minotaur was, I wouldn't blame you at all. I was kind of tempted, but you know I also realized that I need as many red orbs as I can get because I would like to level up my stuff as uh, as soon as I possibly can. Skeletons again, not that annoying, not not that bad. They're kind of annoying with how quick they can be, but they have very little health, so it doesn't take that long to uh, 
to dispatch of them if they don't dispatch of you first. Just have one more skeleton here to deal with. And that will be the last fight of the video. Hooray! Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. We're done with the Bog of the Forgotten. Yay! Now we can get out of here. And have a nice camera shot that we haven't seen in a little bit. The Spiral Stair camera shot. That's not a camera shot that they use often, but it's a really nice uh, camera angle that... Uh, that's really nice to look at when, when, when they do use it. Okay, and to end the video, we're right back where we were before Al Alric uh, ambushed us. This is not the correct path to go to uh, to continue forward with, uh, with, with the adventure. But you can go this way, briefly, to return to the Bog of the Forgotten. Again, Alric's not going to ambush us because he's dead now. Like, super duper dead now. And instead, we can go ahead and open the, these two chests that we were unable to open last time. A Red Orb chest and a Gaia's Gift chest, uh, sometimes called an Uber chest. There are three of these in the game. Their guy gives you a gift of red orbs, a gift of health, and a gift of magic. These are the three things you get from collecting the muse keys in uh, in God of War and God of War One. But now they are now 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 the three uh, now now the three chests. Now there are three chests that are hidden around the um, that are hidden around the the world of the game that you have to find in order to in order to get them. So no longer are you going to get the extra influx of red orbs, the extra health, and the extra magic from one room. They are going to be three special uber chests or Gaia's gift chests that you're going to have to find uh, throughout the game. And we will we will find them. We will talk about how to get them. The first one, basically after getting out of the after getting out of the uh, temple of Uraeli, just make your way back to the bog where Alric ambushed you, and you can go ahead and open it. So that's nice. That's also, that also marks the end of the video. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this two-part Bonk of the Forgotten special. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.